Hello and welcome to C++ Weekly. I'm your host, Jason Turner. I am available for code reviews, contracting, and on-site training. Now, the last episode went a bit longer than I thought it was going to, and I started it by saying I expect this to be a short episode. This one I really expect to be a short episode. This is just going to be an aside, really, um, just about the flexibility of lambdas. I did not come up with this technique myself. I did see this in a C++ Now talk in 2018. But basically, if we've got some sort of variadic template function, that takes some number of arguments. Now we want to do some sort of fold expression over this and somehow in the most complicated way possible sum up the values that were passed into us. So I'm going to make this an auto return type and that's a perfectly legitimate thing to do. Now I'm going to do this fold expression. A fold expression looks like this. We've got parentheses and we've got things inside of it. And now the way that would make sense to do this, but often on these videos we do things just for the fun of it, not because they make sense to do them, would look something like this. So we could do our some value like this. So we're returning 15 here in register 0, and we're looking at ARM disassembly today, and why not? We did the obvious thing here, and often the obvious thing is not as fun as it could be. I just wanted to demonstrate that it is possible, in fact, to do a lambda inside of a fold expression. So we are generating as many lambdas as we are passing in here. Now this is not going to compile yet because we can't sum lambdas together. Let's see what happens if we do this. And unfortunately, we had to change compilers because that GCC 7.2.1 was not yet new enough to support this kind of variadic expansion that we're trying to do. So we're back to Clang and we are back to Intel disassembly here. So there's a very short-lived experiment in continuing to use ARM, but I will still try to use it sometimes in other examples. So what have we done? We have done a variadic expansion of a capturing lambda. So technically, the compiler had to generate a lambda that captures the value t here, whatever it happens to be during the expansion, and then returns it, and then immediately invokes this lambda, does a summation and an expansion of this thing. So this is equivalent to as if we had done something like this. So a capture of the zeroth argument, a capture of the first argument, etc., expanded onward and the values returned. So you might legitimately be asking why we would do this, and this example really is just for the fun of it. But there are possibilities for capturing things and evaluating them against some particular value or generating lambdas that do summations for us or something like this. So if we wanted to add the value 3 to each thing, or something like that, we could. Um, or if we somehow wanted to capture the actual lambdas here that were generated and have a set of lambdas that each do something in a lazily evaluated context, potentially, then we could do that perhaps like this. So there are a couple of possibilities, but this is just like a, a, an interesting thing that you might want to file away and think about when you're working with variadic expansions and wondering if maybe I can do something here with a lambda that might help me clean up the implementation of this. Because a lot of times when working with our fold expressions in C++17, we're kind of stuck with, well, what is the thing that I actually need to execute during this fold expression? And maybe having a lambda there to generate the work for you would help you clean that up. So thanks for watching this episode, and be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe.